Greece, probably one of the most fascinating nations when it comes to civilization, history, and culture. But how did Greece get to where it is today? How did Greece go from being an ancient civilization to becoming a modernized state with the rest of the world? Well, to begin, Greek civilizations have, and always have, been around for thousands of years. But for this video, I'll be talking about when the first advanced Greek civilization began and onward. We need to first start with the Mycenaean civilization, which was the first advanced Greek civilization that existed in the Bronze Age. These peoples existed on the Peloponnese Peninsula, the island of Crete, and the Aegean Islands. These civilizations had the first real sense of, of sense and system and systems of economy, political organization, and other means of civilization. Hundreds of years later, and most old civilizations are abandoned, notably excluding a Athens and warfare at sea significantly increases. One famous Greek figure I'll be I will mention is about is Pythagoras, a famous philosoph philosopher who made the Pythagorean theorem. You have more notable civilizations like Athens, Macedon, Sparta, and other numerous other Greek city states being founded across the Mediterranean. Between the centuries of 400 BC and 300 BC, the Achaemenid Empire, or the Persian Empire, had reached Europe in which numerous Greek city states fought them all together, putting aside their differences. Once expanding its military power and territory, the Macedonian Empire would begin to start. Uh, the Macedonian Empire would begin to start a series of conquests under the leadership of Alexander the Great to conquer the mighty Achaemenid Empire after, uh, after a series of rebellions. Along with this, he founded his own city in Egypt called Alexandria, becoming pharaoh of Egypt. His conquests are still marked today against the Persian Empire as the start of the spread of Greek culture after his father had united the Greek states. In 323 BC, Alexander the Great died, and so did his empire splitting up into numerous states. The state of Macedon would continue until 168 BC, when the Roman Republic conquered it in the conclusion of the Third Macedonian War. Time would march on, and Rome would become one of the most powerful empires of its time. After a series of eternal divisions and splits, 563 years after the end of the Macedon Kingdom, the Roman Empire would split into two states, the Western Roman Empire, a Latin-speaking nation who operated the same as his predecessor, and the Eastern Roman Empire, sometimes known as the Byzantine Empire. The Western Roman Empire would quickly collapse, only lasting for just under a hundred years. In the time of the existence of the two Romans, the Eastern Roman Empire would be a lot more stable, unlike the West, which was incredibly corrupt and stable and experienced a lot of barbarian attacks. Leadership of Justinian the Great. Under the rulership of Justinian the Great, Nor Northern Africa, the Italian peninsula ruled by the Orthogoth Ostrogothic Kingdom, and the Southern Iberian Peninsula would be conquered from the now dead Roman Empire. Only after ten, only after his death, ten years after his conquest, Byzantium would never reach the their territorial peak and would be almost entirely kicked out of the Italian peninsula. Under the Rashidun Caliphate. A series of campaigns would take the Byzantines out of the Levant, Northern Africa, and the Iberian Peninsula, starting the decline of the Eastern Roman Empire. Over time, more and more foreign powers would fight with Byzantium, st stripping away its power and prestige it once had. Along with this, Byzantium was one of the nations who, at the time of the Great Schism, became the leading nation for the now new Eastern Orthodox faith of Christianity. After a series of declines, along with the Byzantines losing control of Anatolia and the Italian Peninsula, with the new rise of the Ottoman Beylik, it'd be clear that the Eastern Roman Empire would not be eternal. Under Constantine XI, the city of Constantinople would be put under siege from the growing Ottoman Empire. The empire would fall in 1453. Constantine XI would die, and with him the would, would die, and with him would die the Roman Empire. The Greeks would be held under a strong iron fist from the Ottomans ever after. Again, time would march on, and 377 years later, in 1830, Greece would be recognized as an independent kingdom. Due to the rise of Greek nationalism, a revolution would occur against the Ottomans, who had been on a gradual, de gradual decline with the recent century. Fun fact, up until the, in the independence of Greece as a kingdom, Greece still referred to themselves as Romans. 
Greece as an independent nation would begin to exist, aside from a few conflicts with the Ottomans, such as some other wars involving Crete and the Asian islands, the Greeks would go on independent. With that, in 1912, the first Balkan War erupted. Greece, with the help of Bulgaria and Serbia, permanently removed the Ottomans and their presence from the Balkan Peninsula. However, a second Balkan War would erupt when Bulgaria, still unhappy with their games, would invade Serbia, further, uh, losing, uh, further strengthening their diplomatic ties that are still seen today with Serbia and Greece. After not deciding whether to join the Great War or not, a national schism would occur in 1917, resulting in Greece joining the Entente. With the outcome of World War I, under the Treaty of Sov, Greece would get territory in eastern Anatolia and eastern Thrace. However, these games would not be permanent, as the Turkish people would revolt, resulting in a Greco-Turkish war which, in which brutal acts would be committed on both sides. In the end, of, in the end the Turks won and Greece was pushed out of Anatolia. In World War II, Greece would be approached by Italy, where they would attack them from Italian Albania, getting getting completely pushed back uh, and sending the Italians back uh, past northern Arithis. However, with the help with Germany, Greece would be uh, conquered and occupied for the rest of the war until further liberated back in 1945. However, one year later after the civil war, one year later uh, after the Second World War, a civil war in Greece would break out between the communists and the royalists. The royalists would win, and Greece would remain a kingdom forever. At, Greece would remain a kingdom forever, and just kidding, uh, forever after, and just kidding. In nineteen sixty-seven, a coup, uh, a coup in Greece would, a coup would occur, um, transforming Greece into a military dicta dictatorship junta backed by the U.S. to combat communism, influencing the state. One war, one war with Turkey later in Cyprus, and the end of the military junta would occur in nineteen seventy-four, leading us to the modern Greek government. Today, Greece is in the EU and is a generally developed nation in a de generally developed nation in Europe. This took a while to make, so I hope you subscribe. Thanks for watching. The script was entirely made by Warding History's brother.